Last time on Dragon Ball. Then something just snapped. Something inside of me. No, no more. That's it. I don't care. I didn't care anymore. I didn't care about being better than Kakarot. I didn't care about being a Super Saiyan. I didn't care if I lived. I didn't care about anything. And then it happened. Yes, that's how it happened. That's how I became a Super Saiyan. The Sleeper has awakened. I am the Prince of all Saiyans once again. Wubba lubba dub dub. I am in great pain. Please help me. Uh, so this time around I want to make this a lot quicker of a video. Because last time I was introducing myself and it was a 25 minute long video. So we're going to try to make this 10 minutes long. So first, as you see here, these are all the libraries I've used so far in the past two months. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that I wanted to cut down on how many of these libraries I'm using because most of these are window and input handling, right? And they're like graphics libraries, right? But I kind of realized that one, we're kind of doing everything and we're doing things for results. So this month I want to say like, okay, we did a lot of stuff last month. Let's focus more on language syntax and let's start doing things like data structures. So this month I focus more on using the Windows API and using SDL3. So the Windows API is something that I heard about from Handmade Hero. So that'd be like Casey Muratori. And he talks about basically building everything from the bottom up, right? And then you have SDL3, which is something that is very renowned in the gaming industry. So everybody pretty much uses SDL3. So it, let, it just pretty much does all the window input handling and uh, regular input handling for Windows for you. So you don't actually have to code any of that. You can just use SDL3 to handle all that for you, and it's really nice. So we want to focus more on just using those two libraries. And there's also AmGUI, which is something I only recently started using. But we want to focus less on using libraries and more on using uh, language, syntax, and data structures. So more focus on the actual language rather than just using libraries. So the first example that I'm going to be showing you is uh, my first 2D physics engine. So I was making this engine. I started this on the 27th, and then I finished this on the 31st. Now, as you can see, it doesn't work correctly because the collision like phases through sometimes, or sometimes the block, the the square blocks do not collide properly, which wasn't supposed to happen. Now, my first issue with this was that. I got really excited and then I tried to do every single part of the physics at once and that kind of led to a lot of oversight because one of the main issues with it was that I wasn't using a fixed time step and which basically means that my collision and actual physics were not actually working properly right so in a fixed time step you have it so that uh, physics will run always a hundred percent at whatever you set it at and this also works with an accumulator that picks up the the frames and then they kind of like minus ins and evens that out so basically that no matter what the fps that the person is having it simulates having the same amount of uh fps for the time step now i didn't find out about the time step issue right away so i was reading this book about data structures for game programmers so this is kind of what you see in the intro that I was talking about with the Vegeta montage. But I really like this. Uh, I haven't finished this. I'm about probably almost halfway through this book. And I still need to go back and forth through a lot of the things. But it gives you a lot of examples visually. And it actually explains in great detail because it is a book. So it doesn't have any time constraint like a video. But as you can see, you have examples like how an array actually works with each of these functions that we make, like realloc. So we are making allocators, we are making things like linked lists, and one of the examples I'm about to show you is using our own 2D array to make a tile map. So we also draw with the functions that we have in the 2D array to draw. So as you can see, uh, I don't have the exact tile set that the book has, but I do have random BMP files I found online and this is the tile map that you're seeing currently now it doesn't take up the whole screen I don't have a background so it's just back in the background 
and it's I think it's based off of like 640 by 360 resolution so it doesn't take up the whole screen right but as you can see we learn a lot of things about data structures in great detail and we have to build them from scratch which is what we're trying to learn because we do want to understand why things work the way they were because we are coding to understand why does the computer think the way it thinks and how can we get it to do what we want as fast as possible right so this is the 2d physics engine that I made after a week of only focusing on programming language and data structures so as you can see the object is bouncing and we actually have it bouncing like a bouncy ball but after showing this to a friend of mine he said why does the object keep bouncing so then I tried to actually remove the energy of the object over time and this is the first result I got but the issue as you can see is when it starts to look like it loses complete energy it slides forward forever so I had to go rethink my idea and the ideas that I came up with was adding some sort of air friction which applies in both the X and the Y axis ground friction so that only applies on the X axis and restitution which applies every time it bounces which is greater friction loss than the constant friction that's going on which leads me to my last actual example which is the physics engine that I feel worked the best so this actually looks like it's bouncing and losing energy and when it loses enough energy it completely stops right so I think it has like pixel uh, imperfect like movement so technically it will slightly move because it is constantly losing energy it is not doesn't have like a static limit so if I kind of track the velocity of the object and I just said after it reaches this amount of sp uh, speed stop applying that would probably be better because currently with my solution it's just constantly applying every second so it's technically not at a full stop it's technically always moving okay so after doing the 2d physics engine right I had a couple choices to think about because once I got it working I was like okay that makes a lot more sense so looking at where we are we have exposed ourselves to data structures and algorithms we've done some physics we've been exploring the C++ and C language we've done some graphics programming and we've had to use some linear algebra so matrices that's what we're mostly focus when we talk about linear algebra and now I say I want to make a player right I want to make a player move with the physics that we have made but first our player needs a level right so I first make a level editor and this level editor was just using SDL3 and I'm GUI right so we're not doing any of the window handling stuff we want to go straight to our project and make a level editor so this is the level editor currently so this was actually my second attempt at the level editor because my first attempt actually when I resized the level so basically created a new level it would resize the array with junk values instead of clearing it to zero and in my enum I have air as zero so the tile means that it's nothing it's completely transparent there's no collision or anything so when I would resize it originally it would actually have a bunch of tiles in random places and this was because the tiles are numbers that are assigned in enum that then hold the texture so then I have to clean that up and make sure that when I create a new level it would clear the array to zero which would be air which means zero collisions and completely transparent so next after making our base level editor we need to say okay we want to make a player so we need systems and the reason we need systems is if we make one player we need to attach to that player many things so we have to attach to the player the physics system and if we're making a 2d game then we need a sprite system so we need to attach the texture then we're also going to need an animation system right and then we're also going to need an input system because we need to give controls to the player right so we need all these things and the best thing would be if we make an ECS so an entity component system and the reason for this is this is completely reusable 
a bunch of objects in our game can use it. So if we make a bunch of enemies and different types of enemies, we can attach components and they can use any of those components. So I had to go learn about ECSs so I can make an ECS. Now at first I thought this would be a lot simpler because the name is literally Entity Component System. So I was wrong, I was completely wrong but it was worth it. The struggle was 100% worth it because what I ended up figuring out is if my original idea was to make an array and to hold all the entities in an array and pre-allocate them. But the first major issue you get into is that that's not a fast way to do it because then if we're checking for 10 entities but we have 10,000 spots in our array and these are free. Our CPU now has to go check 10,000 spots every single time, which doesn't make any sense if we're thinking about it. Like, why don't we just check the 10 entities that actually exist at the time, right? And so this is where we get into sparse sets. So we have one that's uh, that holds the IDs of our entity, and then another that our entities are actually in. So we check the IDs, and then we go to the actual entity, and then we update the systems through that. So instead of actually having to go check 10,000 times, we can pre-allocate 10,000 spaces, put 10 entities in the space, and only update the entities that actually exist. Which I know that's a lot of entities in one word, but I'm trying to make this video less than 10 minutes long and we've already passed it. So what do we get? So let's actually take a look at this project because I know I was talking a lot about different things without actually explaining stuff. So first I want to show you that in the level, this is what I meant by the enum is just a number. So we are attaching a, num a name to our number, which then the name then gets attached to texture. Now currently, I I'm pretty sure I need to make an, a different way to actually hold all the textures totally like if we were to add like a lot of sprites for our player so like actual animation so the sprite sheet would be more than one texture so view that as like animations are just a bunch of textures and then if our enemies had textures if we add weapons we add projectiles we add all these things we need to store them in an efficient way because we need to be able to delete them afterwards as well and then we also have our level editor so currently speaking our level editor holds all our handle input for um, GUI and a bunch of the functions that we're using right then we have our ECS and this is what I was talking a lot about so you'll notice that uh, a lot of the components actually have things in them except the player and that's because the player has his stuff in the player controller system so we can actually attach systems together like I was explaining so we hold all the components in here and here's our sparse set that I was talking about so we make two arrays but one actually holds the ID and the, ac the other one actually holds our entities right and maybe my understanding is not completely correct but it does work I swear so we had to go also <coughs> make this so this is a lot longer because you have to every time you add something here you have to go add it in this remove has and then we also have queries so the queries just basically means we can update multiple things at the same time right and from my understanding most other game engines use up to six I know some of them use up to like 12 or something queries but like most of the time if you do need that I mean, I guess you can make that, but then as you can see, we have to add every single one of these components to into all these other functions. Now, we go into playing. So now, as you can see, we're in our level editor. So these tiles, by the way, and all the art you're seeing, I made this in Asprite, so I paid $20 for Asprite, the software, and basically it's really nice because you can make pixel art really fast. And it's not too complicated because once again it's pixel art so there's only so many pixels that you can fill but let's make a little wall currently 
And as you can see this time, what's different is we also have zoom features and we have our place tile preview. But what you can see this time is that we have the play function and a set player spawn. So if I actually I should draw more tiles so that way we have actually stuff to work with. And all right. So now we can move our player. So we spawn in this player. He's just this is just a static texture, so there's no animations. But we can jump and move in our level editor so I can stop this as well so if you click stop it'll go back to reset the camera view but then the cool thing too is our camera follows our player and it's also the correct render resolution that it should be in terms of real gameplay so this is 16 by 16 tile set and I'm basing this off of 640 by 360 render because that is 16 by 9 which means that you can scale it up using integer scaling and get pretty much pixel perfect likeness so like as you're seeing this brick that I made Asprite looks like a brick and it's clear because we're also using nearest neighbor so we can move in this level editor we have collision so he can't go past these blocks and if you remember what I was talking about with physics and collision, we have a fixed time step here. So it's 60 hertz. And if we go into our, we have editor.update. Wait, no. Editor update world. And if we go to editor world, let's see. There's control F. Update world. So yeah, we have our if player controller system and our physics system in our level editor. So we put that in the update world and then the reason it's in its own function is because we have another update and this is just for the screen movement, so for our mouse. But that would just be like the regular render rate. We don't really care that much, but we want our player to actually have good physics and collision. So, yep, that's the main of what we've done so far. We're two months in. And so far what I've learned is I want to spend a lot more time reading and watching videos because in the first month I spent way more time watching videos. This month I spent a lot of time reading text. And now I want to like go backwards and like go think about a lot of the things that I've done and also work on this more and clean it up because uh, doing things you kind of learn in a really interesting way and like having to build them yourself so hopefully next month we do a lot cooler of things because even I wasn't expecting this much progress